Pat, welcome. Rick, welcome got a little back. Pre-recording going on here. I've got a uh, function I'm going to, which is this is airing on Friday at three o'clock regular time. But uh, we're not live. Uh, but we thought we'd throw it out there as a YouTube premiere at the same time. So got that technology working for us. Been kind of an interesting week. I made a um, video that came out the other day. I did a live thing and I showed the numbers and and uh, um, here's here's what I wanted to show on my seven day moving average. And you can see that new listings have come down and our new contracts have gone up and they come down a little bit. But if I compare it to last year at the same time, it's almost identical. See here, new listings came down. Yep. New contracts started to come up, but then they came down and they they have steadily declined, but there's it's steady as she goes, except for the holidays. And I made a comment that the real estate market is slow and steady. And I got a LOL from somebody, you realtors. Well, how would you describe this? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. not busy it's slow and steady kind of like going through the school zone right yeah exactly you're going 15 miles an hour you're not hitting any kids you're moving along the car's moving along but you're not you're moving yeah <laughs> good analogy yeah. yeah yeah well you came up with that i just stole it <laughs> interest rates are above seven so we're seeing the impact of that it's slowing down um i've got some interesting numbers here to share on uh building permits because people have been asking about that i'm now a subscriber to cromford public so there's a lot more um numbers in there that people can look at and anybody can sub sub subscribe to that but you know i don't think the average joe is going to do that but we have here single family permits 12 month rolling counts we're at a number of, interestingly, 26,000. I'll tell you what I mean by interestingly. But everybody says, oh, there's all this building going on out there. Well, yeah, but no, because there was a lot of building. Now, these are permits, okay? So it's a little misleading in that back here in 2021 and 2022, there were a lot of permits, but they couldn't deliver the product because mm -hmm. of the supply chain issue so a little bit of backlog happened there but uh but they are you know increasing permits then the curious one to watch is multifamily permits and they're at twenty one they they're almost right there with the single family permits but multifamily permits have been climbing steadily since when 20 was that, uh, when was that that bottom right there in the middle of the chart where was that but what what time frame is that that's February 2019. Okay. So that's uh, that was probably when did they tell us to stay home and stop the spread? March of 2020. Okay. Let's see what happened in March uh, 2020. So uh, there's 21. And there it is. So mm -hmm. the permits are still out there, but then they. They dropped down. So prior to all that, there wasn't a whole lot of building going on, which is interesting. Um, and then I have this. This is iBuyers, open door purchases right now. Yeah. You look at look at this peak that they had in August of 2021. That's when they got themselves in big, big trouble because yep. they bought all those homes. And now they've only bought 65, where before they did like 724 in August. 700 in may of 2022 now they're plodding along at six their stocks up i can't figure it out it's up they're still losing money um boy look at it, the dramatic the dramatic decrease and from uh the peak to the valley yeah if they couldn't make money here in 2021 when you yeah. could sell a house just by whispering on your porch they were possibly thinking about selling a house i don't know how their business model is ever going to take off so I well, don't know. You know it's me, for greater minds than me. Correct, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, though, but um, they weren't. They were paying exorbitant prices for some of these homes. Oh. I mean, you had a friend. I'm not going to mention her name, but did she go offer like six hundred thousand for her house or what? Almost, almost seven, Pat. And it was such a shocking number um, that you know, a realtor friend of hers said, "You know, take it, just take it." <laughs> 
I mean, he, he said, I can't, you're, the market's not even close to that. It just, just, I mean, and then kind of the easiest that? transaction she ever had. Um, you know, they, they just swooped in and grabbed it. So, but their, their transaction and the way they deal with these are changing over time. And so it's just something to continue to watch, but look at this number multifamily serious delinquency rates um, and it's percent of total number of multifamily loans. Now that there says 0. 0.40. So this is less than 1%, right? Yeah. They, that's the way it, it says percent of total number of, yeah. So that'd be 0.4%. So let, it's less than half a half of 1%. But look at how much it's gone up, but yeah. it's, you know, I always say a, a large percentage of a small number is still a small number. This is the opposite. This is a small number, <laughs> a small percentage of a large number, I guess is what I'm trying yeah. to say here. But it, it's the difference between what we saw last year and this year. I mean, we were down here, you know, the 0.10 and now we're 0.45. So these are um, owners of apartment complexes and multifamily homes that are finding themselves in a pinch even though it's a small less than one percent it's you know i mean i'm just gonna play devil's advocate it's kind of an alarming chart even though it's a small number you know, per, you know totality wise but you see it go from 0. 0.2 to 0. 0.4 point five i mean it it's it makes you question what the heck's going on well and you look at the number of permits that are out there for multifamily continuing to grow and grow. So there will be some rent relief for people out there. I don't know how much um, it's on yeah. its it's on its way, but rates uh, this week and, you know, they, the PCI data PCE. came out. PCE. 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 Let's get our, it get our balls met right. expectations. Is that what they said? So. Yeah, pretty much met expectations. I mean, we saw, you know, the, the ten-year Treasury was down 0 0.1, four, it's at four and a quarter, four point two five four. <clears throat> We've been seeing it uh, start out in weaker territory this morning, so then it kind of firmed up a little bit, but um, it pretty much hit the forecast. So, you know, people I saw on Facebook, obviously some mortgage people worried about should I lock today? Oh my gosh! And I didn't really see based on yes <clears throat> yesterday's performance. I I didn't see what was going to see any. <clears throat> excuse me, wild swings. So, uh, but it's been pretty benign the last week since about February 13th. You know, there's really not going to be any numbers coming out till early, you know, next week, you know, you got uh, March, early March, but, you know, certainly we're going to have um, some feds, you know, some fed members talking. And that seems to be kind of the, the news lately, the last couple months when a fed, one of the fed members, you know, chime in, they kind of do give more pop to the market than in the past couple of years. And it just seems as though, like I said, the 30 year treasury, the five and a half coupon just been kind of mulling around. Um, you know, things were kind of stuck in this channel. We obviously we saw a peak here in the 10 year treasury back in October, you know, picking out the high four, you know, high, you know, the low, you know, fives, high, high fours, but we saw the low and now it's kind of, just trending in this in this uh, channel it just seems to me you know kind of trying to put trying to put a, a theme on this year kind of like last year i said you know we're going to be mulling around i think we're going to be mulling around but this is going to be the year just dominated by the fed rate cut talk talks every 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 month or two you know, like how many you know every the beginning of years like oh we're going to see six rate cuts now that's been the market got ahead of itself now they say maybe two or three so that's going to be the Josh, Josh, jostling back and forth, you know, and really what has been, dom, you know, really dominates the, tre you know, the, the bond market, the mortgage-backed security market is the treasury, and that kind of trades based on supply and demand, you know, and so. And we have to, there's a lot of demand, not a lot of demand, there's a lot of supply because we have to finance the debt. Yeah. The interest so that, on the debt, and, and we don't, we have a bunch of treasuries um, rolling over. So they have to sell some more to again, finance the debt. Yeah. Well, the, the, there was an interesting, uh, I'm just going to paraphrase this, but I, there was an interesting video on MSNBC talking about the treasury market, how Japan and China, um, really right now own less than a trillion dollars in, in treasury holdings right now. 
And, um, you know, they, they were, they were always obviously a big buyer. There's a chart, you know, I tried to, you know, and I try to put that video together, but there's a chart that shows a direct correlation back in, you know, January, March of 2002, how the treasury, you know, supply was going down and rates were going up. It's just, there's a lot of correlation between the treasury market, the mortgage backed security market. And it's, you know, the feds can do what they want, but it's all the day-to-day -day activity. Yeah. And then this is the interesting part here is that, you know, here's the PCE and even though it went slightly up, it's the fact that it didn't go slightly down. That's got everybody um, not mm -hmm. alarmed or concerned, but I think that's, that's kind of reality. This is, you know, th this right here was a big move and it was responsible for all the optimism by the mm -hmm. bond traders and, you know, okay, here we go. This is going in the right direction. So in March, you know, we can expect a rate cut and then we're going to have another one in May and away we go. And now all of a sudden, oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> well, I think and, you're going to see, I think, you know, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, the easy part of getting inflation down from 9% down to three, three and a half percent is that was easy, you know, for the most part, for just, you know, relatively speaking. Now, yeah. if they want to try to get it down to two, that's going to be the that's going to be the tightening of the bolts, and I I just don't see it's going to be a lot of work. It's not going to happen this year, I don't think. But I'm no economist. Here's what's going on with our listings, Pat. So, and and you know, with the exception of 2022, we have always seen kind of a decline starting in February or March. So. Mm -hmm. We have flattened out. This only updates once a week. So it, I won't see this number until Monday. But in my seven-day moving average, um, or you can see on the ticker below, we went down about uh, like 200 homes, 200 units. So um, it didn't climb up. Now, it always goes up on a Thursday. So the fact that it's down 200 units on a Thursday convinces me that this number is going to remain relatively flat if not start to dip because there's no catalyst for new listings we had a, a subscriber reach out uh, and ask a question from florence and he goes yeah i got a great rate i bought in 2016 i got a 2.75 mortgage he says uh, i'd like to downsize but i don't want to spend 450,000 and uh, get a higher rate and i said well that's the situation that everybody is in. And that's why we don't have any inventory. Yeah. You know, yeah. and they, you can't, he'd like to downsize, but a lot of baby boomers are saying, well, got to stay put. You know, I, I got room for the grandkids here. I wish I had a, um, you know, a lot of my friends uh, and especially friends that are one or two years older are starting to have that serious conversation about later on down the road, will they be able to walk up the stairs? Yeah. You yeah. know, they got two story homes, you know, it's getting mm -hmm. harder and harder. And, uh, so they know that day is coming. And so they're saying, we'd like to get a single story home, but well, I don't know. I got such a good rate. And one of my buddies, he's got a single story home. Of course, he's in great shape. And he said, he goes, I ain't moving and uh, it's yeah. paid off. And, uh, so he's not going to list. Can you imagine how many millions of people out there are, are thinking the same thing? I mean, we're just that 2.75, that 3% range uh, that people are in, there's nothing that's pressing them to say, you know, you know, I got to sell. Yeah. 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 That's, that's the problem that we're in right now. I mean, it just seems like this mark, you know, we're going to be, and like you said, your buddy was like, ah, oh, it's slow. Yeah. It's it, it, but things are moving. You know, we just had a contract fallout. Canceled, but uh, the the listing agent said she had two or three backup offers. It was a four hundred thousand dollar house. And yeah, uh, there there are some parts of the valley that I will describe as very brisk. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so as a number of total transactions, yeah, th they're not out there. But man, there are pockets where it's it's surprising a lot of us. You know, you you put a house in the market. Um, you know, maybe we'll get a few listings and go. What I got three offers. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very hit and miss. Very hit and miss. Can we go? I'm going to go back real quick. Uh, you know, like, well, the bond market, let me see something here. If I can, I mean, basically, right now, rates, and I'll pull this up. I'll try to enlarge this. I mean, right now, we're sitting, I mean, 
at about 7% with a cost of $1,800. I mean, back uh, about a month, month and a half ago, we were sitting in the high sixes. You know, it's amazing how when rates do change, we do see a rise in rates. You'll see the cost like this back a couple about a month and a half ago. This was probably about $1,500, $1,800 right in here. But now it's for six and three quarters, it's $5,900. So, you know, you're sitting in the high, high sixes, seven range. Obviously, if you can get a two, one buy down, you can get down to, you know, you do a two, one buy down from seven down to five. You know, that's definitely going to be much to your favor right now, once again. And with things, I don't know, Rick, are you seeing seller concessions? I mean, um, well, let me, let me look up the chart here and see what that looks like. I closing over list prices has kind of stayed, um, steady. And if I look at, uh, uh, let's see, it's always funny when I'm looking at these charts, I'm going, I can't find it when I want to, but, um, list price listing success rate, uh, um, for crying out, here we are seller paid closing costs. I found it. So we're at. 46%. Now this, this information lags. So this is last month. Yeah. Um, these are contracts that were written last month. So we've gone from 47% to 46%, but the median concession last month was 98. Before that it was 10,000 and now it's still 9,300. So there it's up in that 10,000 range, the average. Mm -hmm. Now an average can mean a lot of different things. I mean, you know, it, yeah. you can, you can have a seller concession of a dollar and somebody else did 60 grand and you're doing an average, but it's out there. So if you're listing, you know, buyers are expecting you to help either buy down their rate or help them with their closing costs. It's just, it's an expectation. However, if you're in a multiple offer situation, uh, that expectation uh, for sellers um, will go away. I mean, for yeah. buyers, they're, they're not going to, ask for 10 K in concessions if they know there's two other people trying to bid on the home. So now yeah, I had an interesting one on a condo, you, you know, the, the new requirements for, for deferred maintenance. So they filled out the form, sent everything in. And then the underwriter said, you don't have the, they don't have enough insurance for the value of this complex. So they weren't going to approve it. Well, they had to go back to, the HOA and the HOA says, well, we get that information from a third party. So they had to reach out for a third party. It took them four days to get that information, to get back to underwriting another day, turn around from underwriting. This was a contract that was supposed to close on the 8th of February. And we closed on uh, February 27th. Welcome and, to the condo world. Welcome to the condo world. It was very, uh, it wasn't stressful. No, it was empty. The owners were in California. The other guy doesn't seem to be, you know, I don't think he had a moving truck parked up there ready to go, but it was, it slowed down the process. Yeah. The condo product, once again, I've, you know, you heard me harp on this for the last couple of years, but the condo financing process can be a very choppy to put, to be very, you know, gracious because <laughs> it's, um, you've got to get information from the HOA, the kind, you know, if it's, is it warrantable? There's just a lot of moving parts. And the problem is if they don't, if they do not answer that questionnaire, if the HOA does not fill out the questionnaire right, it could screw up the whole deal three, four weeks into it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, and a lot of them don't even want to fill it. It's getting better. No. So I don't yeah. want to glaze over and say that it's awful, but it's, it is, it is getting better. Um, so I think uh, I want to kind of share quickly here. Uh, what I can start showing people in the public, Cromford public. Um, you've, I've got annual home sales year to date, annual sales by city, uh, monthly home sales, monthly home sales by transaction type. Um, mm. You know, are they second homes or are they investor owned? Um, percentage of homes by sale by intended use. I like this chart. It's kind of interesting. Ah, oh, the investors are gobbling up the whole market. Well, not really. Um, they're at 14.6% investor. And then second homes, 9.7. Second homes can mean just about anything, but it's not a huge number. And then 73% are owner occupied. Now let's go back to um, 2014 and we were 
74% over occupancy. So the ratio of who owns what really hasn't changed that much in our market. No, if you look at the the color coded blue, you know, the color coding, it doesn't it does it's not really drastically changed. Yeah, it's yeah. So about the same percentage. Yeah, I kind of like that. I like that chart. Um, and then you've got the money monthly average price per square foot. Um, and then one of them here actually shows us the average size of the homes being sold. And this one is a gross percentage map. I haven't dug into that yet, but I'll be uh, sharing a lot of this new stuff. I mean, these this is too busy for me to look at. I get the, <laughs> I get the, is this, this uh, the Crawford report. Yeah, it's called Cromford Public. And you know, it's a month. My question is, my question is, who in the hell puts all that stuff together? <laughs> Michael Orr and his staff, there's only three. Wow. And uh, he's, it, so it's it's actually built, it, it was building it. So they build it to pull in the information. So once you put it together and you build it, it happens in the background. Then he goes through and analyzes it and, and gives you the, uh, what they used to call daily observations. Now he may comment on some data about twice a week. And uh, so it's, it's uh, not everybody, very, not, you know, Correct me if I'm wrong. Not every market's got this type of data. No, the only thing that comes close to this is Altos, and it's a national one. Yeah, and uh, so we're we're very blessed to have this in in Arizona. And this one, it, it he starts talking about birth rates, and we're just not having enough kids out there. But he's saying that um, increases in populations to fill a home in Arizona will need to come entirely from in ground migration, because there's there's not a left birthing going on out there but he does make a comment here about china and said that because they're having the same problem but mm. china is estimated to have 50 million homes with no one to occupy them how this Wait. plays out is still unknown 50 million homes and they're out there and nobody lives there hmm. and so that's a real estate market to watch and see what happens to them. So they don't have the money to buy our treasuries now, Pat. So part of that is the reason why. So, yeah. well, Pat, you take on the day and have a great weekend. I'm anxious. I'm going to that uh, agriculture and appraisal land appraisal um, forum tomorrow. And they are going to also talk about how to deal with any potential water cuts for agriculture. Now, that does not mean that we have a water shortage for residential. It's just that most agriculture gets their resources from the Colorado River. There's a new, there's some new restrictions that have been put in for agriculture. So they have cuts coming. We don't. Our water tables are still evidently in pretty good shape, but not everywhere. So I'm going to get all the details on that and uh, and hopefully get some people that I can bring in on the show. There's a lady with the Arizona Republic that's going to be there speaking. And I'm going to see if I can get her on here. And her expertise is water and water management. So um, I'm hoping I can pick up some gems there tomorrow and some contacts and that I can share here on the show. So oh, good. Well, I know you invited me, but I got to rearrange my sock drawer. So I'm going to be busy tomorrow. I saw your sock drawer. It needs serious help. I know. I know. And, and you know, behind you there, Pat, um, when we get out the show, could you dust? Because start, I'm start, starting to show up a little bit. So the dust, okay, I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pat, my friend, have a good one. Thanks, everyone. See ya.